Hello and welcome to the Behind Closed Doors podcast. My name is Alicia Abberley and I'm so grateful that you've joined us in this space. Behind Closed Doors is all about the types of conversations that we only usually have with our best friend, our partner, our counsellor, our coach. And sometimes it's the conversations that we don't actually have with anybody else at all. The women that are interviewed in this space are all women that are making a difference to the planet. They're women that are inspiring and empowering. The intention is that you too will feel inspired and empowered by these conversations. So grab a cup of your favorite drink, pop your feet up, and enjoy this episode of Behind Closed Doors. Hello and welcome to our next episode of Behind Closed Doors. Today's guest goes by the name of Lacey. She's a Muay Thai fighter and has used this to pursue her health and nutrition passion. She's also studied nutrition and has used this to help keep her healthy physique and also to beat depression. She believes that nutrition is only part of the healthy journey and has stepped into the role of a holistic health coach. Lacey started her journey alone and battled through eating disorders and depression before finding Muay Thai, which gave her the discipline to pursue healthy eating and exercise. Hello and welcome, Lacey. Hello. How are you today? I'm awesome. So excited to be speaking with you. Yeah, me too. My headphones on. (laughs) You look amazing. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. It's awesome. So we have some great topics to dive deep into today. And Mm -hmm. thank you for actually going there in this space. You know, talking about eating disorders and talking about depression are two pretty intense subjects. So I I know that you're going to inspire listeners and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Me too. Great. So Lacey, do you want to share a little bit about your background and growing up and and where you've come from? Uh, Okay, so I grew up in New South Wales and I started, uh, I guess, having eating problems when I was quite young. Um, And I grew up, nice family, everything, just very perfectionist kind of mindset, wanted to be the best I could be. And I guess I kind of was so hard on myself that that kind of continued through my life. And so I uh, left my hometown when I was about 16 and uh, or 17, sorry, moved up to Brisbane and then started the life up there, but I uh, was completely isolated and it was the best thing for me. I'm so glad I did it because it's made me just, just break into a whole new world. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was definitely isolating. So I started my fitness journey when I was about 19 because uh, I was going out a lot. I was drinking a lot and I was not happy with my body. Uh, and so uh, that became a journey of trying to look better uh, but from a place of hate and from a place of not liking what I looked like and so trying to get a positive from a negative place just didn't really just doesn't ever really seem to work so um, yeah I went through that for a few years and it wasn't until I found Muay Thai that I fell in love with Muay Thai and this is what I want to do in my life. And it gave me purpose and it gave me structure. And then I followed that and I pursued it and obviously went to Thailand and, and you know, did what I did with that. But Muay Thai brought me, you know, purpose. And then obviously as I've gone through my journey, that purpose has now shifted to help other people because I got to this point in my life where I was like, oh, I want to win. I want to be the best I can be. I want to, you know, I want to just win. <laughs> And then I got to this point and I was like, it's not about me anymore. It's like I hit this threshold of happiness within myself and now I want to help other people with that because I know what it's like to go through it on your own and I don't want anyone to have to go through it on your own. You don't have to go through it on your own. There's many people out there who will stand there and hold your hand and say, I can help you through this and get you through it a lot quicker and you'll still learn the lessons but you'll save yourself some time and some heartache. So that's where my journey is at at the moment. In that it's awesome and I love that you're 23 I love that you're so <laughs> so wise and mature and you. that you just own your space uh, like I love that I have so much respect for that Lacey so so Thank much you. Uh, and you. I I think that you're a, an absolute role model and inspiration to young girls ac- across the globe so if we have some young girls that are going through depression or going through an eating disorder at the moment what would you say to them that- Let's go. Don't be so hard on yourself. You, your ideal of what you think you are is just, it's, yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. Connect with good, healthy people who will lift you up and remind you of where you can go and push you to be a better version of yourself and cut away anybody who is negative in any way, shape or form and just believe in yourself and know that 
yeah, you can do anything you want to. Like your belief in yourself is what stops you in life. You're the only person who puts limits on your life. And so I guess it's hard to see that when you're in that place and you can't, you just think that you're, you know, you're not good enough. You're not all these negative thoughts, continuous thoughts will keep like drumming in your head. But it's like there's those, you've got to find that little space within you that's like, hang on, I know that I can do more with my life. I know I want more with my life. And you've got to, you've got to reach in and find that and grab a hold of it and then just run with it. Just and Mu- Muay Thai has been it for you. I, I, Muay Thai was that Muay for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone says it <laughs> different ways. Yeah, yeah, Muay Thai, Muay Thai, however you want to say it. But that was that for me, yeah. yeah that was the start. Yeah, great. So that's what. So, how old were you when you started in when you started um, wait, anorexia or bulimia or both? I had both. So I had it when I was very young in primary school. I didn't even realize that I had it. To be honest, people were telling me I was going to pediatricians and that, and they're saying you've got this eating disorder. And I was like, I don't have it, but I was high and things like that. And I, for me, it was an identity thing. People back then, the look was very skinny and people were like, oh, you're so skinny. And that was the positive thing about me. So I feel like some part of me was like, if I'm not skinny, who am I? And so it's, yeah, it's amazing how much we, as women, we kind of wrap our identity up in what we look like and what we're packaged like. And so I think that was part of it. And um, yeah, but um, when I got older, um, I wanted to keep that identity because that was when, you know, especially moving to a new place. I had no identity. I was completely recreating myself, had no idea who I was. And then I wanted to keep that identity of myself, but I didn't have, you know, I was going out drinking and late nights, so I was eating bad food and that. So then that would lead to this, I'd go out, you know, this black and white thinking of like, I can only eat good food and bad. And then that was, I felt a loss of control. So one side was complete feeling of control. And then the other side was a complete feeling of lack of control. And so uh, it's only when I got Muay Thai that I had that structure. It's like now I still have the same, I don't feel like it ever really leaves you. It's still part of you. But now I have a healthy way of expressing it. I go to the gym, I eat healthy, I sleep well, I feel good. I don't feel bad about myself anymore. And that's, that's the journey coming from it being in a negative place to a positive place and being from self-love rather than moving away from a part of yourself. And coming from a family that was actually like, I'm thinking for mums here that might have young girls, do you know, I think for our young girls in society, like for any woman in society, it can be challenging. So for our young girls that are growing up and maybe some of the mums listening have teenage children, or maybe some of the people listening have uh, young sisters or something like that. Like, I know that uh, it doesn't really matter what type of family we come from. These things can happen, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. I feel like, you know, my parents, I feel they took it upon themselves and they thought that it was their fault that I was experiencing these things. But the fact of the matter is, like, as you grow up, you all grow up with your own kind of thought patterns and that, and you could grow up in a loving household, go to a great school, you know, be loved and protected and still have these feelings. And it's so I feel like as, as a message to mothers and anyone out there who has a family member who's going through this, just know that, Yes, you can help, but it's not your fault. Don't you don't have to take responsibility. And um, yeah, that's the main thing. It's not your fault. They will grow through it, and you can just be there and help them and love them, but don't hurt yourself over it. That's a big one, isn't it? When we love people. Oh yes. Yeah. When we yeah. love someone heaps, and and we just want to help. And I think in in everyday life, people are just naturally born to want to help each other, and just to step back yeah. and let someone go through their journey, but be there. Yeah. That's an interesting and, one. And also not understanding the journey. It's especially depending on what age this person is going through this, that depression or whatnot. They may not even understand the journey themselves. So it's kind of, it's very difficult to communicate when both sides have no idea what's going on. So yeah. get some help on that to help you with that because that'll make it a lot smoother, the transition a lot smoother together. That was and- my advice. Thank you, Lacey. Beautiful advice. And what do you what do you think was the trigger point you said before about wanting to be thin? Like as a young girl, a school age girl, what do you think was the biggest uh, issue for you to actually decide not to eat or to vomit after you ate? Like what was it for you? You know what? It, there, it didn't even feel like there was a decision. That's why I didn't realize I had this problem because for me, um, I it, it just. I don't know. Yeah. Even to this day, I still can't explain it. It was just almost like an unconscious behavior of just, 
no, I'll just put my lunch in the bin. No, I'll just put my lunch in the bin. And it's just like a habit, you know, I mean, feeling hungry and just being used to it and being like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to eat. And there it was, it's more an unconscious thing. I don't feel like there was ever a choice with the anorexia anyway of a, a decision that was, okay, I'm not going to. With bulimia, that was definitely a choice. It was panic. It was, I have just eaten. I have just betrayed myself. It was a feeling of betrayal and a feeling of having, trying to put things right in my perspective. And I, I knew that it was damaging my body, but the short-term gain for me felt more than what the, you know, the long-term. But obviously, you know, as time went on, the damage, I uh, was very sick, yeah. And do you think that it was because, you know, maybe you don't have a pinpoint uh, on this. Do you think maybe it was because you weren't happy in your skin or you had oh, yeah. a lot of pressure? Yeah, oh, definitely. It came from a feeling of not being good enough. It felt from, I want to be better, I want to be better. But it was because I felt that I, yeah, I just felt disconnected from myself and I felt, you know, food was some form of connection, but then that would disconnect me from myself even more. So it was kind of a multiple, multiple different layers coming into together and intertwining. But um, it was definitely because I had depression and that was just the way that it was some form of outlet. Hmm. And how did that look? Lacey, people don't often talk about depression and I really would love if you're open to us talking yeah. about this, you know, the types of feelings that you had, the types of um, emotional stuff that you went through and also how you were able to pull yourself out of that. Cause yeah. it's so silent. Like, we just don't often mm -hmm. talk about this stuff. So what did you experience in your space? Um, for me, I felt like people would be better off without me. Do you know what triggered that for you? <sighs> That's just, it's just, um, I just, I think, you know, in primary school, I was bullied a little bit and it was just my own, me comparing myself to other people and then me putting myself on the bottom of that list each time. And so... Uh, just constantly comparing myself constantly that me daily and then it was the feeling of feeling sad and then it was the feeling of feeling you know and that's probably part of not eating was I just didn't feel like eating and um so it just kind of was a spiral and then you know obviously I started self-harming in that and that was anger the anger for me hating myself I hate myself kind of feeling and um the way I actually didn't get help until I attempted suicide and I was taken to hospital and um they gave me a supportive environment and people I realized that I was loved yeah. and so by realizing that I was important and that I was loved it, it made me kind of want to get better and but it's still I still felt this separateness this lack of connection and that continued on you know and I for years and I've slowly kind of come together and found connection through that time but it was it was a long journey I had times where I would feel really good and I felt everything is healed and then those little things that I hadn't worked through would come through again so I think it's important to work through everything because it'll still be there <laughs> yeah I agree always right we're here. constantly doing the work constantly doing mm -hmm. the work I think um what just keeps coming to me now is that again back to the mummies that have young girls and back to mm. the back to the women who have sisters that are young and still at school or people that are women that are contemplating having children. Mm -hmm. Lexi, do you feel that uh, there's, do you think there's anything different and there's no judgment to your parents here, but do you think there's anything different that your parents could have done for the love for you that you could share with other, other potential parents to help them to guide their daughters more? I feel you need to be open and honest with your children. I think that it comes from being open and honest about everything. You know, if you've gone out and you've partied and that in your life, tell your children about that because that creates a bond. And so that bond then makes the child feel safe to come and talk to you about what's going on in their life. So I feel perhaps, you know, not my parents did the best they could and I'm really happy and grateful for them. But if I could give advice to any mothers or family members going on, it's just, just to be open and honest and be transparent because that transparency will reflect back. And so if they're going through a difficult time, they can reflect back what's difficult and feels hidden about them back to you. And it's just connection, creates connection. 
I'd like to second that, you know, my son, yeah. he, I have, I have carried so much guilt for things that I've done as a parent and, or not done, you know, I was never a mumsy mum, and, um, I've done a lot of work in clearing my space. So I don't carry that guilt in my body. I love timeline mm-hmm. therapy for that. Um, it's something that I have always, and this is for the mums out there, whether you have a daughter or you have a son, which I have a son, you know, that open communication, I cannot stress that enough either. There's nothing out of bounds in a conversation with my son. And he knows, regardless of whether, um, regardless of what it, whatever it is, he knows he has a safe space to come to me for anything. Yeah. It could be like anything. There's nothing. There's sex, there's drugs. I'm not saying that any of that's going on, but he knows. <laughs> that, you know, like maybe, maybe it's not, I don't know. But I, I do have a fair idea, you know, like, mm-hmm. uh, in that space though there's there's just nothing he could do where he couldn't come to me and he knows that Mm -hmm. and regardless of what goes on between the two of us and and our teenage challenging years and my adjustment of that um regardless that is something that I've made sure we've always kept that open communication because if our kids can't come to us and they don't know what they can and can't do like where do they turn Mm mm-hmm Exactly. And at that point, they only have their peers to turn to and they're all learning as well. So <laughs> yeah. keep that open line of communication. Yeah. And is there anything else in the, uh, in the space for the depression that you can shine a light on for people? Ah, uh, this is when uh, this is holistic health. This is where health came into play. I wasn't eating very well. I was eating a, like drink, drinking a lot of dairy and, and a lot of white bread and, I look back at my diet now and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like if my parents obviously trying to get me to eat healthy and that, but when you're out with your friends and you do lollies or something. So eating healthy, eating enough, getting enough nutrients will help you feel happier. And that's one thing I've really noticed in my life now. And that's one of the reasons I stick with eating healthy because it just makes you feel alive and you, you look better, you feel better, you feel energized, you sleep better, everything is better when you take care of your body. So I feel, you know, there's that back to that connection loop again. If you treat your body good, it'll treat you back um, good. But if you don't, it's very difficult to find that space of love. Would you say that that's the two biggest things for you? Your, oh gosh, I keep, keep wanting to say Muay Thai. <laughs> Muay Thai? Muay Thai. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Would you say that Muay Thai as a sport for you, being able to put your time and energy into that, as well as your diet, have been the two key catalysts for you for change? Yes. It yes, definitely. And also Muay Thai is very I think a lot. I have I'm a very deep thinker. And Muay Thai, you just get in there and you just hit hard. <laughs> so for me it's that release and just to get in there and have fun. And uh even now I will still find myself thing oh, I want to get better and get better but the best times that I have in gym are the times that I just go in there and I'm not too focused on getting it right I'm just having fun and living life sometimes I get so caught up trying to get things right and get things good that you forget to live a life and that's this interesting paradox where if you just live life things turn out good you just trust the process trust is a big one right oh yes trusting yourself so for people that are wanting to change their diet, I know this is a specialty area for you, for people that are, they know, right? We, we know this stuff. We know when we reach for a can of coke or we know when we reach for a piece of cake or when we reach for the white bread or whatever mm-hmm. it is for us, at whatever our vice is, we know when we do that, we feel those guilty feelings. We, yes. uh, yeah, totally. My dad, <laughs> uh, my dad's a naturopath or was a naturopath. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, what we think about our food is worse for us than what we actually put in our mouth. I agree. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. definitely think so. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The stress that we can put around that. So if you're going to have that piece of cake, you're going to have that Coke or whatever, I believe just do it right. Enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. okay. It's okay to do that. It's when we have those yes. guilty feelings. So yes. if, if you were to share a little bit there about getting diet on track. So it doesn't mean that people have to eat like rabbits. You know, I can't stand a raw diet. I really don't like yeah. that. I'm a warm foods kind of girl love yeah. leftovers. So, you know, eating healthy for those people out there that are listening that just go, Oh gosh, I don't want to eat that way. It's not about eating raw. It's about eating mm-hmm. for your body. So what could you say? What would you say to people Lacey, that are wanting to change their diet for potentially oh. to help, help their mindset as well? The can of worms right now. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Choose the lifestyle you want. You have to live this lifestyle. Don't choose a diet that is six weeks 
where you're hating it and you get to the end and you're like, oh, chocolate cake. Choose what you actually want to live like. If you want to keep going out with friends and you want to keep having a couple of glasses of wine, a couple of glasses of wine, keep doing that. But just improve on the things you're not too bothered about giving up. So for me, I didn't mind giving up soft drink. Soft drink was easy to get rid of. But I would still go out with my friends and have a nice, you know, nice, you know, creamy Italian food or something. Um, and I think that's healthy. And I think the reason that I, you know, became problems arose with my eating was because I had this black and white thinking where I thought I'm just going to eat healthy all the time and then you set yourself up for failure and so it's 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 like just be honest with what you want to live your lifestyle like and be honest with the consequences of that if you want to eat that white bread and that you can no one's stopping you but the consequence of that is your health is not going to be as good as if you chose to eat you know more foods uh, and smoothies for me has been a really big one because it's a good nutrient dense way to get a lot of good uh, vitamins into your body. And you just have one in the morning and you go and it's just a lot easier to get your two and five in um, rather than trying to eat it all. So what's your favorite smoothie, Lacey? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, probably. Okay. As one, probably apple, cucumber and spinach just blend together with water. Nice. And do you keep it's a lot light. of... Do you keep a lot of fruit out of your juices for sugar content? Yes. Uh, so I do juice things like carrot and things like that because that's low sugar. I uh, steer away from, you know, if I'm juicing an apple, I only juice half an apple. Uh, but for me, I, you know, normally training twice a day. Um, so I need a lot of, and I'm very energetic kind of person. So I need a lot of energy. Uh, so it's not too bad for me too, but it really depends on your kind of body type. You know, there's no one or be all that is for everybody. It's, You'll learn and you'll see your body, you know, if you're drinking a lot of juice, you'll start getting, you know, the, the belly happening. So yeah, there's that fine balance. Definitely balance is important in all areas of health. Agreed. Yeah. And something I'd like mm -hmm. to share there in my own health journey for, for our listeners is that there's no blanket, right? There's mm -hmm. no, and this is something I find really interesting. So some people can go, don't eat meat. It's bad for you. You're not supposed mm -hmm. to eat meat. Now, according to Dr. Adamo, who um, has the blood type diet, O blood type, O blood types are able to eat and digest red meat. It just mm -hmm. is the way that our bodies are made up. And that's just one person's theory. Mm -hmm. According to, um, you know, other diets, they say to not eat too much protein. Some say eat protein. Some say eat raw diet. Some say mm -hmm. eat coconut oil. My thing is listen to what your body says. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Regardless of what other people are telling you. Cause I know my body does not like coconut. Mm -hmm. That's this big thing. And every day you go and all that rude, raw foods, it's like coconut. And, and what, how that happened for me, how I realized that my body didn't like it was that I started ingesting it thinking that it was good for me because what's that model's name? Australian. She was a Victoria. Miranda sister. Kerr. Miranda Kerr. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jumped on the Miranda Kerr bandwagon, you know, get the nice hair and mm -hmm. get the nice skin and nails. And I started ingesting teaspoons of that and I could just feel my body reacting to it. Just mm -hmm. something was going on. I didn't know what. So I started Googling it. Got to love Dr. Google and um, stumbled upon Dr. Damo and everything that he talks about. I'm an O blood type and everything that he talks about for O blood type resonated with me. Mm -hmm. All the foods that I'd never liked my whole life and all the foods that played up in my system uh, were foods that he said weren't good for my blood type. Mm -hmm. now, now, people won't agree with that. Some people will say, no, that doesn't work for them. For me, it did work. So I say go with what your body tells you. Have a look around. You don't need to just do uh, ingest coconut oil because someone says so or you don't have to go and be, eat like a vegan because somebody says that's best for you. Listen and tune into you. Yeah, I live by that as well. Definitely. I just listen to, to how I feel. If I feel I need to eat more vegetables, I will. Sometimes I, I, I generally try to avoid having too much milk and meat, but that's more because of uh, like animal abuse kind of things. Um, but if I, I will get a feeling, okay, I need to drink milk and I will allow that for myself. Um, but yeah, everybody's different. And that's the thing I realized when I studied nutrition is that they didn't just give us a, all like they gave us the breakdowns of the mathematics of how much protein you need, etc. But in terms of how much fat carbs and protein, nobody had any idea. There was, <laughs> there was, diff they just gave us three or four different types and we studied those. So I don't think there's a blanket approach really. I think you, everyone will know what's right for them. Just tapping in. Good. Yeah. Tap in. Tap in. Trust your own intuition on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the biggest things, uh, just to just to go back for a second, 
Is there anything else that the biggest things for you have been exercise and Mm -hmm. your health and the foods you've been eating to help with depression and also to help with eating disorders? What would Mm -hmm. you say is something else that has helped you, Lacey, or is there anything else that has helped you with depression? Yeah, a good environment of people. Definitely. That is a massive one. If you surround yourself with people who are positive about life, who are going in a certain direction in life and you, you'll just be impacted. Like they say, you're the top, you know, the top five people you're hanging around. And that is so true. Uh, so healthy relationships has been a big one. I know when we met, I was going through some shifts there. So that's been an amazing change in my life. Uh, and I definitely, that's what I've been writing, blogging about recently is the impact that people have around you in every way, shape or form, even in facts of what you eat. Because if you live in a household full of people that, you know, drink soda and have pizza, that's going to impact on that as well. If you live in a house with people who stay up late, that's going to impact on you as well. And that's the exact same thing when it comes to mindsets and the mentality and limiting beliefs. You can transfer limiting beliefs from people to people. So surround yourself with like sideways environments, I call them, people who are on the same level as you. And then people who you aspire to be like and have somebody that you, is your role model and, and listen to them and listen to YouTube videos and motivational videos and keep your mind in a positive place because that just makes all the difference. It really does. Absolutely. And if just to extend on that, if you are someone who's listening to this and you find that you're in an environment that's not advantageous for you and you're wanting to shift and change that, but you don't know where to start, there's meetup groups. Uh, Like Lacey said, you can jump on YouTube. There are some incredible people online. Uh, There's guided meditations. There are leaders in their field. Um, Some empowering women that I love, Oprah Winfrey, Danielle Laporte, um, just the name two that I can think of off the top of my head. Gary Vaynerchuk, amazing for mindset. Tony mm-hmm. Robbins, awesome. So if you're just looking for um, to shift or elevate, if you're listening to this and you're and you're wanting to move to that next level in yourself, and you're just not quite sure how to do that, then there's some people that you can actually tap into. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Such- and I, I feel like each person will be drawn to different people as well. Agreed. There, there are different leaders life. out there. Totally. They're just some that I like and the ones that could come to the top of my mind. Everyone is different. Who are some of your favorites, Lacey? Oh, Regan. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Nichols, uh, Dr. D. Martini. Um, probably Dr. D. Martini has been one of my favorites. He's very level. He's very zen. I really love that. Um, yeah, they're probably my top, top few at the moment. Uh, Les Brown. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Great. And it just depends, doesn't it? So you can p- type in your Google search, whatever you're looking for. If you like health, type in health experts. If you like mindset, type in mindset gurus, whatever it is for you, you know, you can play with the internet. That's the beauty of the internet. Mm-hmm. Great. So Lacey, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners or our viewers that you feel could be impactful for them? Oh, such a good question. <laughs> uh, just if I could leave with one thing, It's just to believe in yourself because you are the one setting the limits in your life. And if you choose to be better, you will be better. And that's it, really. You just believe in yourself. You've got it. Don't doubt yourself because you've got it. And you've just got to find that that you were born with everything you need. Everything that you need is already inside you. You don't have to go anywhere else. You just need to be you and just let yourself shine and you'll have a great life. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful words, Lacey. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us in this space. I appreciate you opening up and sharing on on subjects that are quite touchy. And yeah, I appreciate your deep dive on that. So to each and every single one of you that have joined in for this episode, thank you so much. And I look forward to catching you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.